Dear Faithful, welcome to this new video. Today we return to a topic that many faithful and believers care deeply about. The third Fatima prophecy is one of the most intriguing forecasts involving the Church, and it is time to tell it. You see, Our Lady's secret has been kept hidden for a long time because those who know it continue to maintain that the time has not yet come to tell everything. Only in 2000 did Pope John Paul II reveal what was hidden in the sealed envelope containing the secret of Fatima. These secrets are supposed to be linked to hell, world wars, and persecutions against Christians in the 20th century. And why is 2024 considered to be the year when everything comes to pass? Join us in the following video to discover everything that has been hidden for ages. Our Lady of Fatima is the title given to the Blessed Virgin Mary in honor of her apparitions to three shepherd children in Fatima, Portugal. Our Lady of Fatima told the shepherd children to recite the rosary every day until the war ended, which was World War I at the time. Mary appeared to the three children, Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco, once a month for six months. In October 1930, the Bishop of Leria Fatima deemed the visions credible. The Catholic Church pronounced the children's visions worthy of belief in 1930, and Fatima has since become one of the world's most important Marian shrines, with around six million pilgrims visiting each year. Many pilgrims visit Fatima to commemorate Our Lady's Day on May 13th, the anniversary of the first apparition, and on October 13th. Pilgrims to Fatima receive a particular blessing and can pray for healing or other specific goals. Returning to 1917, the Blessed Virgin Mary appeared to three Portuguese youngsters during a six-month period. The most well-known of these children is Lucia Santos, who was joined by Jacinta and Francisco Marto. Lucia became most well-known for the secrets she kept and revealed at the request of the local bishop. As word grew about the apparitions over the course of six months, many individuals sought proof. Thus, at Fatima's final appearance in October 1917, Mary caused the sun to dance in the sky, which was published in newspapers and witnessed by tens of thousands of people. But it is not this that piques people's interest. It is the secrets. The youngsters, particularly Lucia, believed that Our Lady had given them visions to keep hidden. These visions were communicated to the children at one of the central visits, not the first or final. While the siblings Francisco and Jacinta died as children during the Spanish flu pandemic, Lucia dos Santos became a Carmelite nun and survived to the age of 97. She died in 2005, 23 years after the incidents occurred. Lucia was asked by the local Bishop of Fatima to write down the secrets, which she did cheerfully for the first two but she was unsure if she should expose the details of the third secret. The bishop told her to do so in holy obedience, so she scribbled the secret and placed it in a sealed envelope that was not to be opened for 19 years until 1960, when she stated that it would be easier to grasp. Pope John Paul II beatified Francisco and Jacinta in 2000, making them the Roman Catholic Church's youngest non-martyr children. Pope Francis canonized the siblings in 2017 as part of the centenary celebrations for the Fatima apparitions. Our Lady revealed three secrets or visions to the children during six apparitions, which became known as the Three Secrets of Fatima. The first secret or vision was about hell. Lucia wrote that the Blessed Virgin showed the children what the hell was like, including the anguish endured by the souls there. The children described the image as almost uncomfortable, despite the fact that it lasted only a second. This instilled strong faith in Mary's promise to bring her believers to Christ in order to save souls from eternal agony. The Blessed Virgin revealed the second secret to the young children in a vision in which they learned that World War I, which was still going on at the time, would come to a conclusion. However, another world war would break out during Pope Pius Nelethan's papacy, which lasted from 1922 to 1939, unless humanity ceased offending God and Russia converted. The Virgin requested that Russia be devoted to her Immaculate Heart. And do you know what happened by coincidence? World War II began in 1939, exactly as Our Lady predicted. And this brings us to the third secret, the one that gets everyone's attention. 
Sister Lucia did not wish to reveal the third secret, but the Bishop of Laria asked her to write it down, and the document remained sealed until 2000. The third secret of Fatima was ultimately revealed in 2000, on the occasion of Francisco and Jacinta Marto's beatification. Lucia wrote the third part of the secret revealed at the Covadairia Fatima on July 13, 1917. I write in obedience to you, my God, who have instructed me to do so through His Excellency the Bishop of Laria and through your most sacred mother and mine. Following the two sections that I have previously described, we observed an angel with a flaming sword in his left hand, who appeared to be on the left side of Our Lady and slightly above her. The sword flashed and released flames that appeared to have the potential to ignite the world. However, they were extinguished by the splendor that Our Lady emanated from her right hand. The angel called out in a loud voice, pointing to the earth with his right hand. Penance, penance, penance. In an immense light that is God, we observed a bishop clad in white, resembling the Holy Father, much like how individuals appear in a mirror when they pass in front of it. The Holy Father, afflicted with pain and sorrow, passed through a large city that was half in ruins and half trembling with halting step. He prayed for the souls of the corpses he encountered on his way. Upon reaching the top of the mountain, he was killed by a group of soldiers who fired bullets and arrows at him. This fate befell the other bishops, priests, men and women religious, and a variety of lay people of varying ranks and positions. Under the two limbs of the cross, two angels each held a crystal aspersorium in their hands. They collected the blood of the martyrs and sprinkled it on the souls that were en route to God. The secret of a bishop dressed in white, presumed to be the Pope killed by bullets and arrows, was naturally attributed to the failed assassination attempt on Pope John Paul II. But some people argue that this cannot be the case because the Pope did not die in the attempt and the white-robed bishop in the vision instead dies. As a result, some say that the Pope's death foreshadows an upcoming event. However, when the third secret text was revealed, then Cardinal Ratzinger, one of the greatest theologians of the 20th century and future Pope Benedict XVI, penned a companion text. In it, he argues that the secret will most likely be disappointing or shocking after all of the speculations. No major mystery is revealed, and the future is unknown. He adds that the vision's objective is not to present a video of an unchangeable fate. Rather, it is designed to organize forces for positive change. As a result, we must entirely reject fatalistic explanations for the secret, such as the notion that the would-be assassin on May 13, 1981, was just an instrument of the divine plan guided by providence and hence unable to act freely or similar theories in circulation. Rather, the vision describes hazards and how we can avoid them. We shall now discuss the apparitions of Our Lady of Fatima with the children in preparation for the sixth apparition and the unveiling of the secrets. The first Marian apparition at Fatima took place on May 13, 1917. Mary requested that the children return on the 13th of each month for six months. Mary warned the children that they would suffer terribly, but would go to paradise, and she requested them to pray the rosary every day to bring peace to the world. The second apparition happened on June 13, 1917. Mary asked the children to include the Fatima prayer at the end of each decade of the rosary. The children asked Mary to take them to heaven and she said she would soon take Jacinta and Francisco, but Lucia would stay a little longer. The third apparition occurred on July 13, 1917. Mary showed the youngsters a vision of damnation and revealed to them that God wished tremendous devotion to Mary's Immaculate Heart in order to save souls. Then she foretold World War II and persecution of the faithful in Russia, warning that without prayer and devotion to her Immaculate Heart, Russia would disseminate its errors over the world, fomenting wars and persecutions against the church. The fourth apparition happened on August 19, 1917. The local administration imprisoned the youngsters to keep them from meeting Mary. Six days later, she came to them in a pasture and asked them to pray fervently and offer sacrifices for sinners, as many souls go to hell because no one prays for them. The fifth apparition occurred on September 13, 1917. 
A throng watched white rose petals falling from the sky and then disappearing. Lucia implored Our Lady of Fatima to heal the sick, and she said that only some would be healed since the Lord did not trust those who were not healed. The sixth and most renowned apparition of Our Lady of Fatima occurred on October 13, 1917. 70,000 to 100,000 individuals witnessed the sun's miracle from up to 10 miles distant. Secular journalists present at the miracle described unexplained happenings. Mary showed herself as the Lady of the Rosary and advised people to change their lives, ask forgiveness for their sins, and stop offending our Lord, for He has already offended enough. The children were selected to meet Our Lady of Fatima. There were plenty of adults at the time, so why did Our Lady of Fatima choose to reveal herself to three children? It is not a coincidence, and not every kid will get such favor from Our Lady. The lives of Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta, the three child shepherds of Fatima, are stories of grace and charity. In these children, we see in action the same paradoxical force that has marked and acted throughout the history of salvation. The infinite disparity between the history of the proud and powerful with their schemes, strategies, and conflicts, and the history of the humble, who in the truth of their existence are invited by God to be a leaven of transformation for humanity. As visionaries of God's mercy, the little shepherds will spread the word they have received through their humble lives. They have been chosen to be witnesses to the presence of God's love, to the God who is love, radiating and making His gracious face visible to the world, transforming their life into a reflection of the light that is God Himself. The Lady had them view themselves in the light cast by an oak tree's shadow. Brothers Francisco and Jacinta, as well as their cousin Lucia, were born in Aljustrel, a small village in the parish of Fatima at the turn of the 20th century. They grew up in a modest family environment in a harsh, quiet, and isolated village. They couldn't read or write and understood very little about geography, history, or worldly wisdom beyond the horizon and the mountains. They received a very basic Christian education, as was common in the remote area in which they resided. Lucia's mother exposed her daughter and nephews to catechesis, and Lucia, who was a little older than her cousins, told them biblical stories and prayers she had learned from her mother. Despite the simplicity of their Christian upbringing, their parents set a living example of genuine faith. Sunday Eucharist attendance, family prayer, honesty and respect for everyone, and compassion for the poor and needy. Lucia was a youngster who was sensitive to God's love. Her inner longing to be completely immersed in God's embrace will be the guiding force behind her destiny. Francisco regarded nature with a meditative gaze, nourishing inner silence as if he felt creation and was immersed in the Creator's splendor. He was attracted by both sunrise and sunset, preferring the latter as the Lord's flame. Jacinta preferred Our Lady's candle, the moon, because it was kind to the eyes. The girl clung to her cousin Lucia, whom she adored. She embraced the lambs, named them by name, and went among them, carrying them in her bosom to do what our Lord directed. They lived deeply as only children can, a simple life entirely dedicated to God, truly and without unnecessary ideas, and received a supernatural response. On a spring afternoon in 1916, following their simple prayer, the tiny shepherds saw above the trees a light whiter than snow, in the shape of a young man crystalline as crystal, when the sun shines through. Nothing could have led them to believe that the light in human form was the herald of God's peace, ushering them into their school of spirituality and prayer. Many are accused of deception and greed, even by their own families, with the exception of Francisco and Jacinta's father, who believe they are propagating a lie and are concerned for their safety. They are subjected to frequent and grueling visits and interrogations both at home and elsewhere. But the greatest test and affliction would come on August 13th. On that morning, the children were surprised by a visit from the mayor, an administrator, a well-known Freemason and freethinker, who questioned them at their home and in the rectory because he wanted to know the secret they insisted on keeping hidden at all costs. The administrator, in a deceptive and unscrupulous manner, claims to escort them to the Cova Diaria, but instead leads them elsewhere, 
insisting on forcing the boys to confess their secret and even locking them up in a cell with other prisoners and threatening to cook them in olive oil. Francisco's naive remark radiates tranquility and joy. Even if they kill us, we will go to heaven. The small shepherds' lives were consistently marked and measured by God's heart. The fiat, spoken to the lady, brighter than the sun, was constantly refreshed by Lucia, Francisco, and Jacinta's naive yearning to deepen their adoration for God. The presence of God became the sacred ground for them, and like Moses barefoot before the burning bush, their intimacy transformed into an act of worship before the inner light that is God, blazing without devouring. This is the ineffable secret that empowered them. The sacred bush that burns in their hearts awakens them, as it did with Moses, to the importance of caring for people who are enslaved by sin and ingratitude. So, in the view of all others, they are a presence of God's light, as well as mediators before God on their behalf. Their lives become a perpetual gift of all that they are and do for the love of God and the salvation of sinners. Francisco, Jacinta, and Lucia's lives reflect this contemplative, compassionate, and proclaiming vocation, yet each of them will welcome the special nature of their calling with a distinct and stronger accent. Francisco, moved by his inner gaze sensitive to the light of the Spirit, responds to the call to prayer and contemplation. Little Jacinta translates the joy, purity, and generosity of faith accepted as an offering from God's heart and spread through the tasks and small things of her simple girl's life in an acceptable sacrifice to God for humanity. Lucia accepts the vocation to evangelize, to spread the good news of God's mercy in response to God's loving wish to dedicate the world to the Immaculate Heart. In her, we may see the steadfast witness of a gift embraced and given to the world. Francisco and Jacinta's lives were brief and straightforward. They lived solely for and from love, as shown to them by the lovely lady. Francisco and Jacinta died as a result of a bronchopneumonia pandemic in late 1918. The lady had informed them that they would go to heaven very soon, so the children knew their time had come. Who would have thought that such brief and basic lives could contain such profound love? Live honestly and love God with all of your heart. As three youngsters, the small shepherds embodied God's passion for humanity, and as a result, they were chosen and created prophets of God's love, offered and proposed to the world as shepherds according to his heart. Our Lady of Fatima fervently urged all the faithful to pray daily for the salvation of impoverished sinners and for the entire world. This message from our Mother Mary is a challenge to all, regardless of their current stage in their personal prayer journey, to intensify, pray more frequently, and with greater fervor. It is now appropriate to retrieve the rosary that has been placed on the shelf since its acquisition at confirmation, as some of us may not pray frequently, except in instances of dire necessity. However, keep in mind that this prophecy is not scripture. Instead, trust in the Lord and you will be in the right.